Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, February 27th. We have Drewby Wilson, founder of Call the Damn Leads. If there is ever a day where you need motivation to get your ass off the couch and make a difference in your life, it's today. Let's check out Drewby's story. Well, Drew, do you, so Drewby, Drewby, where does that come from? What's that short for here? Uh, so my government name is Andrew, but nobody calls me that except the government and my teachers in school. And Drewby was really kind of like a gamer tag and kind of like a, a nickname. Some some people gave me early on in my sales career before I was in legitimate sales. And so it just kind of stuck around over the years. It stands out. It's a little different than, you know, your typical Andrew Wilson. So uh, I, I've really leveraged that for my personal brand to, <laughs> to stand out from everybody else. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so my name is Drewby Wilson. I'm the founder of Call the Damn Leads. Originally started back in 2021 and has really just taken off here in the last 90 days or so where we've gone all in. Um, I walked away from about a half a million dollar a year C-suite position at a corporation to build something that I can leave to my son and, and really create as a legacy for what's possible when you go all in on yourself. Awesome. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about that. Take me back to 18-year-old to Drew. Would he be sitting right here saying, call the damn leads? No, hell no. 18-year-old Drewby would have been out there selling dope and, and running around causing a ruckus. So there's definitely a, a lot of growth that has happened along that path. Take me through. Go all the way back to, um, you know, you just finished high school and what, what's the world, what's the world smacking you in the face with? So if you go back to 18 years old, thinking about coming out of high school, um, graduated, like I said, I was in what I call the commodities relocation business, meaning if you needed it, I was a guy that could get a hold of it for you, good, bad, ugly, whatever it was. I just happened to have someone that could find it. And, you know, I kind of played that that role. After I graduated, I didn't want to be 100% in on that. So I got a job as a nuclear pharmacy technician which is a real fancy word for saying I played with radioactive isotopes and I mixed them up with these chemicals and sent them off to hospitals to use in testing. And I did that for about four or five years. And unfortunately, it was a third shift position. I got real overweight, wasn't sleeping well, wasn't real happy, kind of decided, all right, I want to make a change in my life. I'm looking for some new, new adventure. Um, ended up getting out of the pharmacy business and going as a bouncer. So cousin of mine's like, yo, I got this guy I'm dating. He owns these clubs. You could be a bouncer. You'll make decent money, blah, blah, blah. So I went and did that for a little while. You do not make decent money as a bouncer. I made 10 <laughs> bucks an hour and I worked like four to five hours a night. So it was like, you can't live on this kind of money, man. What's wrong with you? And so um, I ended up going to the owner and was like, well, hey, do you have any other business or any other job? I'm you know, looking for some additional income. And he's like, well, I own a cigar and tobacco shop. If you want, you can work there during the day and then you can come and, you know, do the bartending stuff or the, the bouncing stuff at night. So I was like, all right, cool. Started working in the cigar shop. Didn't really know shit, just kind of working a register and just, you know, I had the hustle because I was hustling other things on the side. So I knew how to sell, but I didn't know anything about tobacco or cigars or any of that. Like I didn't even smoke cigarettes at the time. I was breaking down blunts to roll, dude, you know, like <laughs> I wasn't smoking them. I was filling them with other stuff, but I'm the kind of guy that likes to learn. And so I took it upon myself to really understand, all right, well, what is it that these guys are coming in for? What do they like? What do they don't like? Why are they buying? What are they buying on top of these things? And so I really just focused on the customer service aspect. And in doing so, I got promoted to being the manager of the shop about six months or so after I started there, which was interesting because the to get the job, the guy who owned it said, hey, man, you're doing a great job. If you want to be the manager and make more money, you got to go back and tell the other guy that you've been working with, who's been managing the shop for 15 years, that you're taking his job. And so at 21 years old or whatever I was, I went and <laughs> told 60-year-old Harry, I'm like, Harry, you're the man and I'm taking your job and I'm, I'm really doing this so that we can work together and help more people because you get annoyed and I need more money. And so like, let's just make this make sense. Um, and I ended up having that job for about five years. One of the best, you know, I helped make, raise it to the, the top cigar shop in the city. We got voted on. We made a lot of money. At least that's what I thought until two weeks before Christmas. Um, the owner had come in on a Sunday and he's like, hey, man, you've done a great job for me, but I got to let you go. 
two weeks before Christmas, man. What do you mean you got me? Let me go. And he's like, well, my accountant and the tax guy, they say that you're not doing a good job and I'm always having to put money in the bank and this, that, whatever. And I was just like very confused because I looked and ran the books and did on like, there's profit. I see it. Like, I don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And again, I wasn't a business owner. So I only saw the numbers of what came in, what went out and like there was extra. So I didn't know about like the taxes and all the things that go along on the back. end. so it was learning. Um, but hindsight, beautiful timing, three months, four months later, he ended up getting, you know, investigated by the IRS for some tax stuff and different things that were going on. And I blessing to not be there. With that time frame, though, I had gotten recruited. One of our clients in the shop saw me get let go and said, hey, man, I know you're a hustler. I know there wasn't anything that you did wrong. I've got an opportunity for you to come sell furniture for a little while if you need some money. So I went and sold furniture for six weeks. Funny enough, man, I this is really where I learned that I had like the gift of sales because I was just distraught. I mean, imagine two weeks before Christmas, literally had just spent all my money on Christmas presents, didn't have anything to my name, and now I'm trying to find a job in the weirdest season of all. But God bless me, gave me an opportunity to go sell furniture. And I ended up selling about $150,000 worth of furniture in a six week period, commission only. The kid was like, hey man, I, I can bring you in and give you commission what you sell, I'll pay you on, but that's about the best I can do. So I hustled my ass off and I didn't know anything about furniture, but I always just focused on how can I serve the person who's here trying to get what they want, what they need. And it worked out really well. I think the guy who had brought me in that had been there 10 years sold like 175,000 in that six week period. So I was just crushing it. Ended up from there during that time of, of selling in, uh, furniture, I got invited to be a part of an insurance agency. One of my in-laws was like, hey, I'm opening a shop. I know you're a sales guy. I want you to be my dude. So I went and sold for, uh, insurance for five years. One of my top in my market, got all the awards, did all the things. And then I reached a point where I was one of the best producers in the market. And I was getting asked by all of the regional presidents and by, you know how it is in corporate, there's 18 different regional presidents and vice presidents and all these guys that are like, hey, will you speak for this group? You know what? We come and speak at this. Tell people how you're doing all these things that make you so successful. But on the other side, it was in the office, like, oh, we suck. We're not getting enough done. We need to sell more. We need to sell more. And I'm like, I'm literally sun up to sun down, busting my butt. And I'm making, you know, three, four grand, five grand a month on like a really good month. Like, what's it going to take to make a hundred grand? Now, granted, I was a, a, you know, a hustler from school that barely graduated. And like, I, it's not like I had a whole lot to say, but like, I also knew that I wanted more out of life than where I was. And God bless the guy that I that owned the agency. He's still, you know, family and, and I got nothing but respect for him. But he said the greatest thing he could ever say to me. He's like, hey, man, you just need to be patient because in like 10, 15 years, it'll be your name on the door. You'll be good. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. And poor guy <laughs> wouldn't be long after that, that I was online going, well, what the fuck do I got to do to make more money? Because if he's not going to give it to me, I'm going to go find it. And I realized as a sales guy, I need leads because if I have more people to talk to, I can close more sales. I have a 30% close ratio. Like just give me more people that I can talk to. I'm going to make money. So I went online and I started learning online marketing funnels and websites and pay per click advertising. And like I went down the rabbit hole and within the first 30 days had built my first website, ran paid traffic to it. I spent 500 of my own dollars to generate 250 leads, which doubled my production for the month. And I went, holy smokes, this is insane, right? I just made six grand in one month from learning this marketing stuff. And what do I, what, like, what do I do from here? And my, my agent came to me and he's like, that's what you, so that's what I'm told you, man. You just, you just go work. I, that's, so that's, that's what I'm saying. He thought it was all him. And <laughs> I had a couple other agents that called me and they're like, bro, what the hell is going on? You're the top guy in the market. You just doubled your production. Like, what are you doing? I said, like, well, I learned marketing. I built this website. I'm running paid advertising. Like, let me explain it to you. And they're like, bro, I don't, I don't got time for that shit. But if, if you can set it up for me, how much will it cost? Well, I don't know, man, give me 2,500 bucks. And they're like, all right, done. 
So over a weekend, I made $10,000 setting up Facebook ads and building websites. And I had never made that much money in my life working 60, 70 hours a week, grinding away, making cold calls, trying to sell insurance. And it was like that light bulb moment, like, bing, you're on to something, dude. And so I ended up leaning in further on the marketing. I built a marketing company, ran that for a couple of months, got a call from a guy who I was being mentored by at the time. And he's like, hey, bro. Um, I think you're in the wrong business. Like, I know you do insurance and you got this little marketing thing going on, but like, you're in the wrong, you're doing, come fly down to Texas, spend a day with me. Let's talk. Let's see what we can figure out. So I flew down, had a conversation with him, flew back to Ohio where we were living at the time, told the in-law who owned the agency that I'd worked for, for six, six years. Like, Hey man, I love you. I appreciate you. You've done a lot for me. And also I'm quitting my job in two weeks to start over at like basically a tech support position for this startup out of Texas with a big upside. And, you know, he was supportive and appreciated the opportunity and was like, you know, that's great for you. And then, you know, how it is like I left and then there was some drama and some bad blood because I was the top producer. So it was like, yeah, I, I get it. Um, but then I got into working with masterminds, coaching, consulting, some really high level, marketing processes, sales and follow-up. I mean, all the things that I had learned in my decade of sales experience, I basically said, let's go 150% all in on it. And so for the last six years, I've essentially done nothing but focus on high-level entrepreneurship, business, scaling, marketing, sales. I mean, just about anything in every job in a corporation, I've held, worn that hat. And now I'm bringing, you know, having stepped away from that opportunity, giving others a chance to see what's possible because aside from just business, like business is great and I've had some success there, which is cool. And I, you know, don't mind talking about it, but I've also lost over a hundred pounds during that time. I've almost lost my relationship with my wife and completely rebuilt it over and been able to completely revamp our marriage. And I've been able to go out and create opportunities to like serve and donate and to give back to the community to the tune of like, a significant amount of money that it's, it's not just about the money, but it's knowing what good we've been able to do with that. And the example that I've been able to personally set by sharing that story, coming on podcasts like this with you, Nate, which I mean, again, I'm super grateful for the opportunity to share this because someone is going to hear this and they're going to go, you know, man, I'm tired of being stuck in this position. I don't want to be in this glass box anymore. What do I got to do? And, and the truth is you just got to go for it. You just got to trust in yourself and know that, you know, if uh, literally today I was walking out of Walmart, my wife and I were getting ready to sell our house and move into an RV and travel around the country. And we were kind of going over how we're a little nervous and, you know, it's a little scary to, to, to completely uproot everything. And there was a gentleman at the front who stopped us on the way out. And he was just like, oh, can I see your receipt? So we show him the receipt as we normally would, you know, and he's like, well, I just want you guys to know something's telling me that, you know, never worry. Like, if you don't got it, don't worry, because God's got it. And if God's got it, you ain't got to worry about nothing. And it was just like one of those divine downloads, you know, it's just like, that's the thing that's so exciting about our life right now is that, yeah, we've been able to be successful in business. And I've worked really hard and put a lot of time and energy into learning it. But it's so much more than that because of the lifestyle we get to create from the work that we've done, knowing that we're going to keep doing the work and creating a lifestyle that we have. And that's I, I I really appreciate you sharing that and, and the way you did because it's 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 one thing that sales is a is a very unique profession, sales in, in a profession that you know a lot of places uh, you can and I I can I'm going to speak from experience as well like I've been been doing this a long time since 2008 grinding away so some exclusive contracts some months dry you know sometimes you know it's ramen and peanut butter and jelly and hot dogs and you got to do what you got to do and there's other times where it's it's, it's amazing. And in those times, one thing that's always consistent and always made me feel proud about my own skills and basically could connect with you is the fact that we can create a lot from nothing. And it's, a, you know, with and my my dad and mom used to always joke around saying that they wanted me to be a lawyer because I was a good at arguing and I was good at talking. And I keep reminding them that I've had a much better life using the same two skill sets in a completely different fashion. So come on. <laughs> So, um, but no, I, I, uh, I want you to kind of focus a little, I want to focus a little bit too on, uh, on your current, uh, program. I'm going to call it a program, but tell me what you call call the damn leads. What is, what is call the damn leads for you? 
So call the damn leads for me. It is a community of like-minded, success-driven entrepreneurs, small business owners, and sales professionals. And the main focus is to help you dial in on your processes for success. Because success is a perspective, right? What I see is going to be different than what you see, Nate, is different than what the person listening to us sees. Everyone's got their own like version of it. And what's crazy is our version is way, way different than what our parents' version of it was for us versus their parents. And like, if you went back a couple generations, they would not even believe the life that we live. And so when I think about success and our journey for Call the Damn Leads, it's literally just a mantra for creating the life that you want by doing the work that's necessary to make it a reality. And that's where most people, I think, get stuck, Nate, is because they can all see the dream. They see it. They think, oh, that sounds great. That, you know, I'd love to do that someday. But it's the willingness to remove the someday and make it today. It's the, okay, well, if that's what I really want, like any goal, what do I have to do? Reverse engineer from where it is to where you are to create those steps. Because whatever goal you have in life, for the most part, is realistic if you're willing to break it down and take those first couple of steps. But most people never get past the, oh, that would be nice, but the first roadblock is the first roadblock that I never move past. And that's for for the for that for anybody that's never done a cold call before. There's a different type of sale, and I, I'm not trying to teach you. I want to kind of elaborate a little bit more as our professions and and things like that when we're working with our clients, as well as I'm sure yourself. Trying to teach them when you hire somebody and teach yourself when you hire somebody, you have to look for two different skills. One's an order taker and a maintenance person, and one's a a hunter and a and a and a uh, business development manager. You know, and that's and there's two kind of really different paths there. I've always been of the hunter business development. You know, it's, it, I'm very much in the give me a give me a, a field, not a pasture, and I'll go out there and you know build you a mountain or whatever you want to do, build you a house and a log cabin with a uh, stream through it. But one of the things is that we talk a lot with clients about that, and a lot of them get disappointed because they'll hire salespeople in the market and it doesn't work out because they hire too early. So one of the things we do is we go out and we will curate a market for them beforehand so that when they hire, they increase their opportunity to get a quality person because they're not trying to get somebody that's going to go nailing doors down cold and what what because that is a, a, a unique skill set that that not all of us have and uh that's not a sense of pride because there's a lot of other things that uh, i can't do as well so <laughs> 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 but uh but but that's a but your 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 program is one of those things that i really it, ca- it caught me for a long time i've been following you for a while i didn't reach out right away it was one of those things where it's my number one thing is is you can sit here and say oh they don't want to get back to me you don't get i used to have the time where uh 25 reps and all the reps would be like oh yeah this guy's not available for me this guy's not available for me this guy's not available for me and what were they doing they were hopping in the car they were driving down he was at the store he was at the bank and they were never doing anything between the stops and i said hey 30 days for the next 30 days i want you to make one phone call between every drive and they're like oh what do you what do you, what do you mean just call one account you're not going to go into that day that is like for the next week or whatever else and call them ahead of time. And all of a sudden they started having to pull over because they were taking an order and then they were pulling over because they were taking another order. And then all of a sudden the order started growing and all they were doing was making one action a step a month or a day, one action step an hour. (laughs) And as you know, when you're on the road, let's say, let's say your targets uh, 20 to 30 doors a day. If you're making 20 to 30 phone calls and hitting 20 to 30 doors and you got 60 accounts and you're hitting at a 10 or 20% success rate, you're cranking for the week, man. Come and on. People do not get, and I appreciate so much the breakdown of where your philosophy is. It's so simple. It's you can sit and watch all the YouTube in the world, and you and I both do it. We both we have our email sequences, we have our PPC ads, we have all the things behind the scenes that everybody doesn't see. And those are the things that are curating the business and qualifying the prospects and that. But at the end of the day, the fastest and easiest thing is to pick up the phone and call a damn lead. Come on that, you know, well, and here's the thing where people, again, they, they let call reluctance, they let their insecurity, their guilt, their shame, whatever word you want to use for it, prevent them from showing up for the other person. And it's, it's unfortunate because like, to me, sales is just servanthood. You're literally not, unless you're someone who's only in sales to make money and take advantage of people, which is very few and far between, especially if you're listening to a podcast like this, those guys don't listen to podcasts. They don't care about other people. So if you're here listening to this, you're someone who does care. 
which means you have empathy. And empathy is one of the most important skills that you can develop as a professional in sales or in any life gen in general, but sales especially, because sales is two things. Can you ask good questions to understand who the other individual is and where they are in their journey? Because you need to know, do they have a problem? Is this problem something I can offer a solution for? And it's either one of two things. It's either pain that they're getting out of or pleasure that they're moving towards. That's it. That's all sales is. They're getting out of pain because they don't want to deal with something anymore or they're ready to celebrate because they've been dealing with some shit and they're not and they want to take advantage of something nice. So you just ask those questions to understand where are they at and what are they looking for? Do they have a pain point or a pleasure desire? Then once you know that, it's can you be confident in your ability to deliver the thing that they want? That's it. And if you can't deliver what they want, be very quick to say, you know what, Mr. Smith, we're not a good fit for what you need. Here's the secret, though. I happen to know a guy who is a great fit. Let me introduce him to you. I don't want to do you the disservice of not being able to deliver at the quality that it should be. This is your man. Let me make an intro. A lot of people don't understand that it's as simple as that. You don't have to, you don't even have to. If all your skill is, is your mouth and your brain. And all it is is you're just an amazing schmoozer. You don't even have to have any other skills because you can get by with just connecting people to other people. And mm. that's a thing where it, the, the, a lot of people don't understand that networking ecosystem. They think it's all, you know, walking into a, a, a Marriott courtyard and, and handing out some business cards. And it's not. It's, it's building an ecosystem that becomes interdependent upon each other. And you become, the, whether you're the center of it or, a, or outside of it, it's your ecosystem. And it then is all your different revenue streams and your and everything like that that then service to your quality of life. And I think that, you know, we started I started mine in 2008 book and bands. And that's what it was. It was I, I was in a band in high school. I tell the story a lot on here real quick. And, and I suck. I, I was absolutely horrible. And I, I, I realized quickly I was good at talking. I was good at selling. And I was good at like walking out, shaking hands and kissing babies in the street. So I went out and I was the band promoter for, for the stuff. So I went out, did the flyers, did the cold calls, called the book, the shows, negotiated the rates, all that. And then it snowballed into what I'm doing here 20 years later talking to you. But, you know, we, we all get in our different ways and our different things of what we're doing. And I think that too many people get scared of sales because they get they get the Jehovah's Witness in their mind or the uh, solar guy that's banging on their door. And not enough people realize that I don't I don't actually look at myself anymore as a salesman. I stopped looking at my salesman about 10 years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm a business consultant. What I bring what I bring to people when I call them, I call them and I'm making them money when I call them. And that's that's what that's what happens is when they answer my phone, I'm not sell if I'm selling them something, it's a it's a it's a it's a return of a guarantee on the other end. And then that's all there is to it. And there's so that, that takes that confidence out. And I want everybody to feel that way when they listen to this, when they see you and they see these different things out there. It doesn't have to be the YouTube get rich quick. Uh, how did I made a hundred grand in 30 days? Cause I'm going to call bullshit on all of them. Don't, don't show me your one statement from one month, throw me your, show me your 12 month rolling. And then we're going to talk. And I don't mean anybody's better or worse. I want to, I want people to have a real understanding that you can make so much money and, or control your time, depending upon which is a value to you. So that that's those two paths of what is your most valuable thing in the world? And all you have to do is have a phone. Oh, Nate, you're talking my language and you really inspire me. This is I'm going to share something. And this is why I'm like for me personally, right? This is why I'm actively getting out on other podcasts and spreading my message because I have built a little ecosystem. But you know what happens? It, it stays in its little ecosystem. So <laughs> I got to get out of my box too, right? And so one of the things that you mentioned, I think this is so powerful. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Time and money. Most people are out trying to get money so that they can get more time. <laughs> but the truth is, time is our most valuable asset. And this is the question that I always ask anyone that I ever start working with. I say, how much is your time worth? And so, Nate, I don't know. I'm going to ask, do you know, can you give me what is your time worth? Do you have a rough estimate? I, I do, but I can't publicly disclose that. So I got to tell you, but here's what, here's what I can tell you is it is a consideration of every minute of my life. And it is both a, it is both a, a positive and a benefit to how much I analyze it is what I'll tell you. <laughs> that is a fantastic answer. And that means that you and I are on the same page, but let's make it easy for the folks that haven't really figured this out go. yet. Right. Because that's, 
that's who we're here to help the individual that's still trying to understand where this fits in so the the formula that i always give is your time is worth x amount per hour that's kind of how we all learn right you you grow up you get paid 10 an hour 20 an hour whatever that number it's arbitrary so whatever you did last year cumulative all of the money that you made your main job your side hustles all the money that you made total that all up and then divide that number by 2000 and here's why if you worked a normal job 40 hours a week and you took a two week paid vacation every year, you'd work 50 weeks a year times 40 hours, that's 2000 hours. So the easy math is if you made a hundred grand last year, your time is worth about $50 an hour. So we can agree on that, that's just math, right? So like just breaking it down, that's math. Here's where I'm gonna fuck you up though. And I'm sorry for swearing, but this is like, this is a big one. You're good. Nate, if you knew you only had 24 hours left to live and I handed you a $50 bill and said, come with me, what's your response going to be? Text, no, you hand me 50 bucks. I got six hours. I'm telling you, see you later. I'm going home, man. Exactly. And that's yeah. how it is. But yep. the problem is we don't operate that way in our day-to-day -day lives. We just operate on this assumption that we have an unlimited amount of time left. And where it really hit home for me you know, the money side, yes, obviously I wanted to make more money, but it was the health side because I had a friend who came to me and was like, Hey, Drewby, I see that you're putting in the work. You're starting to make more money. That's fantastic. Like, I love that, that hustle mentality, that grind. But I got to ask you, you have a beautiful wife and son. How would it feel if you had to sit up in heaven and watch down for eternity while your wife slept in your bed with another man raising your son with your money? Cause you didn't make the time to take care of yourself first. That was a gut and I, punch. And I can tell you, I can tell you, Drewby, I won't get into it in long detail. You can hear it in other podcasts. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a product of that. I, I spent, I, got, I became a workaholic in my early years. I missed a lot of crucial times with my kids when they were young. And I'm making up for it now in a lot of, in, in certain ways. And, uh, and I think that that's the end of the, that's the uh, end of the day. The number one thing people got to remember is your, pol your values can change. Where, who you, what your priorities were when you were 20 does not need to be the same priorities when you're 30 does not need to be the same when you're 40. True that. And I think I appreciate you. Thank you for that gift of being vulnerable and sharing that with me, because that's something that a lot of people don't want to talk about, but it is a very scary truth. And at the end of the day, I look at it like this. Most of us entrepreneurs, business owners, like normal people, we want to live what we would call like quote, a balanced life. Mm -hmm. We want balance which to be honest is kind of BS because you can't really have any good ups and downs if everything is balanced. However, for context, let's look at balance. We know there's 24 hours in a day. Just in general, we can, we can all agree there's 24 hours in a day. And in my opinion, there are four areas of life that are really important. Sleep, because nobody can survive very long without sleeping. So like, let's just make sure we know that we can't do without that. We have our family and our relationships because that's typically what we're saying is our number one most important. When you ask someone what's their why, oh, my family, the legacy, like, let's just, you know, well, that's right there. Then you have your business because most of us aren't FU money rich and get to just live the life that we want and not have to ever work for it. So we got business. And then we got this weird little thing down here for ourselves where we always put ourselves last. Right. So you've got sleep, family, business, yourself. And we're all we're always putting ourselves last and making sure everybody else has what they need. But what was the first thing they told you in the safety briefing on the airplane? Get your oxygen, you get your own on. You got to put your own oxygen mask on first, because if you do not, you literally become a burden to everyone else around you. And so if you're living your life, putting yourself last, you are a burden to the rest of your circle. You cannot show up the best version of yourself if you're not showing up as the best version of yourself for yourself first dude we are we are kindred spirits i'm just gonna tell you i'm gonna give it right here there you go that's the juggling that's me man the juggling clown buddy beautiful <laughs> and and so when you think about it that way though okay there's 24 hours in a day there's four areas of life that are important if we divide 24 by four it's six so we can spend six hours a day in those four areas and have balance. And here's what I really know. 
If you've ever spent six hours focused on a specific task or spent six hours with someone that you really enjoy spending time with, it goes like that. And you can get a lot done. I mean, if you sit and spend a focused six hours working on any specific task or like literally just hanging out with someone, that's a lot of time and you can get a lot done, but you have to be intentional with it. So what I always encourage people to do now that you have this realization of now you know what your time is actually worth and you understand the areas of life that you're spending it in. Now I want you to go back and I want you to do a time study. For the next two weeks, I want you to, at the top of every hour, make a note of what did you do during that hour. I worked out, I took shit, I read a book, I scrolled on Instagram, like be very intentional about this. And what's going to happen, Nate, is by day three, maybe, you're going to realize you've wasted a lot of time on things that are not generally getting you the result in life that you want. And once you have that awareness, you now have the ability to make new decisions. And it's those new decisions which are going to create the new results. And those new results are what are going to create the goal that you're looking for. Now, Gruby, can people hire you to come in and, and come to sales meetings and stuff like that? Is that something you've done in the past? Or do you st strictly do one-on-one? -on -one, or is it motivational and one-on-ones? I do a mix of everything. So I like to look at it as everyone has their own preferred flavor of coaching or, or working with someone. So I have a big group community. I do some one-on-one -on -one consultations. And then I'm also a big fan of coming in and working with small groups and, and sales teams because that's where we can really make the biggest impact, right? If I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, yes, we can obviously make a great impact right. and that's fantastic. But if we can work together and help your team of 25 sales reps, and each one of them gets to grow a little bit, well, now that's an exponential increase because my mission is to help as many people as possible keep growing and, and creating the lifestyle that they truly see as successful. So I'm willing to help anyone and everyone who wants help, whether it's in a group setting, one-on-one, -on -one, or standing from the front of the room and leading a team. I think uh, I think that's excellent. How long have you been doing, doing this specifically uh, kind of on your own uh, with that part? So uh, on my own, we launched as a full-time business about 60 days ago. I've nice. been doing this now for 10 years. Like I said, when I was in the insurance, I was leading rooms. And then I really did this for the last five years from you know the front. And now I decided, hey, I want to be able to do this kind of in my own flavor, my own style, and be able to do it from the road in an RV because I just think that's going to be cool. See, now that's a whole nother thing. So are you going to, is the RV trip going to be incorporated into the brand? And in, yes, excellent, excellent. Yeah, sure is. So our goal is we're putting our house on the market. We're going to move into the RV and then we want to travel around the country. And as we arrive in different locations, we'll be doing some high level consulting with some of the businesses, obviously uh, checking out the local community, seeing how we can support small businesses in that community and then throwing little pop-up meetup events and uh, networking type things. So it's like, hey, we're in, Thaddisville, Georgia or whatever, like, come on and check us out. We're going to be down at the Roxy doing this, that, whatever. And, and really just, again, having an opportunity to help other small business owners and entrepreneurs. You don't know what you don't know. That's why you get in the room like those so that you can meet the right people at the right place at the right time and the right things can start happening. Drewby, I tell you what, man, I'm jealous. I, I, I'm really jealous. I've always wanted to just hop in an RV and just do it, man. I'm a big camper, big outdoorsman and things like that. And that's, that's definitely on my bucket list. I want, I want to say that was not what I was expecting as far as your future plans. And I, I, I think that is an incredible idea. Not only like in such a digital world, you're going to take this analog piece and just disrupt the entire market. I mean, it's like, I can just imagine like doing all the prep ahead of time, like having a warm city waiting for you when you come in. I mean, that's just genius. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm very excited. And, and honestly, Nate, that's why we are taking this step. You know, my, my wife and I, you know, when I joined the corporate company, I traveled for years. We traveled together. We took care of business. And, you know, we, we sat and watched as my son had to see us travel and had to go through these processes of like hanging with the babysitter. And we just decided, you know, I think at this point, it's probably best if we bring it together to where we can do something as a family. How can we travel and do all of these things? So we bought a camper last year, started taking that out like every other weekend and was like, man, this is cool. How could we do this all the time? And we started seeing the other RV families that do it. And I'm like, the only way to do it is to do it.
And every time we started telling someone that we thought that might be a fun idea, they told us to say, man, that sounds incredible. That's like a bucket list idea. Well, tomorrow isn't promised. So what are we yes. going to do? We're going to take action today and make it a reality. No, you're exactly right. I think uh, I, I, I kind of I, I'm going to already call it right now. I want to have a, a follow up. And uh, what's what's the launch date of the RV trip? April. Awesome. I want to I want to do a six months. Uh, we're going to have to set it on the calendar, man. Six months after you launch, we got to do a part two. I All would right, love that. We'll put all some videos up of uh, of the different places you've been and do kind of like a, a roll up, man. I love this. That would be so cool. I appreciate that opportunity, Nate. Hey, Drew, do me a favor here. As we close out, just give everybody all your social media handles, how they can reach you, corporations, entrepreneurs, anybody that wants you to juice up their sales staff, as well as work on systems, processes, protocols, whatever it is, uh, get them all your contact info. Hey, man, Nate, thank you so much, bro. Anybody who's heard this, got some value out of the show, wants to connect with me, they can just go right to callthedamnleads.com. There's a, a place to sign up. You can reach out to contact me. I also have a book that I just launched. So if anyone wants a free copy of my book, Call the Damn Leads, uh, go to callthedamnleads.com forward slash free book offer. You can download a PDF version, learn some things about sales and follow up. But more than anything, Nate, I really just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here, to pour into your audience. I want to thank anyone who's taken the time to listen to this today uh, for their time. Because again, man, I know how much it's worth. And for you to pour into me and give me an opportunity to pour back into you and your community, it means the absolute world. So anything I can do, anyone who's listening that needs anything, you just reach out to me directly at Call the Damn Leads on every social platform there is. That makes it simple. So you guys come and find me and I'll be here to help. Are you looking for a way to grow your business, reach new customers and increase your sales? If so, you need the FreeMind Group, founded in 2008 and a provider of creative and strategic solutions for the food and beverage industry. Whether you need branding, marketing, product development, or innovation, the FreeMind Group can help you achieve your goals and unleash your potential. Visit our website at thefreemindgroup.com and get a free consultation today. Thank you for listening. See you next time.